bass players of the internet, we are here today to celebrate the genius, yes, the genius of Mr. Duff McKagan. We've got incredible bass lines to show you. Well, actually, Ian's got them, and not even I know what they are. We're going to be getting into those today, and we're going to be writing a wrong, aren't we, Mr. Allison? Absolutely. There was a tragedy that happened in the bass community tragedy. in the early 90s involving Duff McKagan, and we are here to right the wrong and set the record straight today. And we've got the PJs here as well. Oh my God. Almost matching. We're going to be getting something really cool about these PJs as well, and maybe how you could win one as well, but that's, we'll be telling you about that later in the video. But Ian, what do you want to just jump straight in? I've got like weird Duff facts that people might not know about. I've got... I've got some really cool clips to play, but maybe we just Before jump we into do the... any of that, yeah. yeah, let's dive into the tunes because Rocket Queen, <laughs> it's like one of the coolest bass riffs of all time. And this album, Appetite for Destruction, 1987, blew my mind when it came out. One, two, three. Oh. <laughs> 1987, Duff was playing his jazz bass special, which you have got one right yeah. there. Beautiful bass. This is the bases. same era. Yeah, this is a 1985 jazz bass special. This is one, this one is in Burgundy Mist. Duff always played the white and black ones, but I love how this has the black neck and the black tuners. Um, never mind the little bobble that my daughter gave me for a good luck charm when I <laughs> took this bass out on tour once. But <laughs> this is an amazing instrument from 1985, original, yeah, all Duff's stock. was 1986, actually. So that was the year after. Um, do you want to hear Duff talking about how he got that bass? Yes. Mm. <laughs> Uh, I did my research. Check it out. You know, I was that guy. We we rehearsed right behind Guitar Center on on Sunset and lived there. Everything. So this unattainable place was. You'd walk by it every day. You'd go inside and look. So we were probably those pesky. You know, I've been there. You know, guys who are never yeah. going to buy anything, play shit. So we got our advance. We got a record deal. And we got an advance. And I came in one day and I'm like, I want that, and I want that. So with that on the wall was this jazz special, Japanese made. I'd played it, I knew it sounded good. Had Seymour Duncan pickups in it. Has yours got Seymour Duncans on it? Well, so this has the original pickups that Fender used, which are like proprietary pickups. They have big oh. pole pieces. Maybe Seymour Duncan made them for them, got but it. I bet these are the pickups actually that were in Duff's bass. I don't want to. I don't want to call him out and be like <laughs> he's wrong. <laughs> but unless they had been changed, they all came with these sort of big pole piece pickups. And if you know in the comments, maybe Seymour made them for Fender, but they didn't say Seymour Duncan on them. They just had these gigantic magnets, and they just have this big sound. Yeah, it's cool. <laughs> There's something about the PJ sound that just is incredible, right? It's kind of yeah. like reminds me, honestly, of like, in a way, the Alice in Chain sound, which, yes. you know, it was a PJ, it was a Spectre. And hey, right. did you know that Duff McKagan briefly played in Alice in Chains? What? I'm here for you, dude. <laughs> I I'm did here not know for you. that. Do you want to show us the bass line? The, yeah, what is sure, it? sure. Do you want to show us the bass line? Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, man. That's absolutely right. We're just playing. And I feel like I've just got a bit of GK amp simulation going on. I just have it blended straight in the middle. So I'm getting yeah. the P and the J together, which is a sound that I actually haven't been super fond of historically, but but just really committing to it and digging in, maybe tossing on a bit of chorus too. Mm -hmm. uh, for the sound, you kind of touched on it there, the sound for Appetite for Destruction, right? Key signature sound for Duff. It was a Galen Kruger, R, um, what is it, the 800 RB, is that it? Yeah, RB800, 800, 800, 800 RB. Yeah, RB yeah. yeah, whichever way around, but it's the Galen <laughs> yeah, Kruger. Yeah. 
It was obviously the jazz bass special. And then he had a chorus. I think it was an Ibanez CS9 chorus yeah. pedal. And then later moved to a rack mount chorus. Oh, so just committing to yeah, the chorus. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> if you want the tab of notation, we have got it for you guys. Ooh. Link is in the description. So if you want to see what we're playing during this entire video, it'll be down there for you completely free. Now, with that said, should we jump into the second bass line? Or... Oh, Hold it, because we've got this incredible bass giveaway going on. It's completely free to enter. You can win this amazing Alinto PJ bass. Alinto was sort of like some of the best boutique builders out there. You can win that ba that very bass that Ian's holding right there. Yeah. You can win that. You, we've also got oh, we've also got this absolutely bonkers Alinto J5 with just check the neck out. <gasps> Oh, yeah. That's crazy. Bonkers, right? We've got this up for grabs. We've got this. Oh, my word. Oh. Which is incredible. <laughs> yeah, no. Incredible F base custom deluxe worth. Um, a few kidneys on the black market. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> maybe, right. maybe even more than a few. We've got a Music Man Stingray. Yes. We've got a extra special Ian Martin Allison Mike Lull with a beautiful SBL Red. If you want to join, again, it's completely for free. All you need to do is go to winabasebuildaschool.com. It is down below as well in the description. Go click that and grab your chance of winning one of these incredible instruments. Now, should we jump into the next track? Because it's another yes. one for from Appetite, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, Appetite is high up on my list. I mean, okay, you gotta just check this thing out from Welcome to the Jungle. The classic. Oh, that. It's so scary. This whole descending thing. Oh, so good. You're in the jungle, baby! <laughs> <laughs> that was just insane. Dude, when I listened to this album when I was a kid, right, I, yeah. especially there was something about that track. I felt like I was like doing something wrong. I felt yes. like- Yes. What distinguished Guns N' Roses, I think from other like 80s hair metal sunset strip bands is they were like dangerous sounding. They yeah. sounded more yeah. like they were scarier and more dangerous. And now this music is it, you know, in football games, it's everywhere, right? It's yeah. like ubiquitous yeah. and it doesn't sound as dangerous. But when it came out, man, I was like, oh my God, you're yeah. exactly right. Like I shouldn't be listening to this. I felt like I was breaking some kind of law right yes so it, yeah it's weird now interestingly before we clicked record you said you were like why is it so good why yeah. is appetite for destruction so good and frankly so many of the guns and roses you know albums that like use your illusion and stuff like that there's something about the tracks dude it's the parts yeah. It's like everybody has a part within the band. It's it's not like a jam. It's like no, it's, it's not a jam. Yeah, there's parts to it. And I found a clip on the internet about how they re how they were rehearsing for the uh, for the recording of the album. It's it's wild. What's maybe not known totally about early Guns N' Roses and still to this day, we rehearsed twice a day. That's all we fucking did. Crazy. So we worked yeah. on parts where. Slash's guitar would go in that part, and where Izzy's guitar, everybody would find their piece, and Stephen wouldn't fill through a somebody else's lick. And we really right. like every yeah. little piece of Appetite for Destruction was super thought out. And then we just play it and just be a rock band. So it's like the whole thing, yeah. Yes. Like it comes across like they're just like bad boys, right? That ah. <laughs> Yeah. But the reality, but nerds. <laughs> yeah, the reality is they're freaking nerds yes. and they're rehearsing twice a day and crafting this amazing album. And then <sighs> he goes on to say that they did the entire album in two or three takes. The whole wow. thing. Yeah. Pretty wild. Dude, what was that? <sighs> yes. It's so cool. He starts with this ascending chromatic thing. That isn't that cool, and then so he 
only does the ascending thing one time and then it just breaks into all the way through, you know where you are? <laughs> oh my word. Hey, something we should mention as well is the bass, our bass is attuned to E flat. Everything's yes. down half a step. We're keeping it real to the, you know, Appetite for Destruction, Guns N' Roses. They always shift everything down a semitone. So as you watch this video, feel free to tune down. Okay, dude, hit me with the next track. I'm ready. Give okay, it to me. Still, we're hanging out on Appetite for Destruction for a little while. This is my Michelle. And, you know, just when you think that Duff is just like a E string, you know, grungy rocker, he hits you with this amazing melody. Check this out so ominous check this yeah. out duff that's bass way up high tone knob rolled off oh that's interesting almost like baritone guitar again pops right yes so awesome and then this riff <laughs> my god so check it out. To get this thing going, roll your tone knob all the way back. Duff starts up here. Killer. Right? What a great line. <laughs> and then that everybody the second comes in. phrase. And do, 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 do. Oh, that's a yes, cheeky note. How cool is that? Yeah. Yeah, that one there. If you want any of the tab and notation for this, remember it is down below in the description. Down there in the description. <laughs> <laughs> Time to hit me with those duff facts. Dude, I've got the facts. I've been promised and I've been doing my research. Well, check it out. I mentioned it earlier. Obviously, he played for a stint in Alice in Chains. He yes. also played for a stint in Jane's Addiction. He's played with a bunch of, you know, other big bands as well. He's been in the Hollywood Vampires, obviously bass player of Velvet Revolver. But he's also got Lean In. A oh, secret yeah. life. A secret what? life that nobody, what? well, I didn't know about at least, and you probably don't. <laughs> Check this out. Duff McKagan is a finance badass, right? And in the early 2000s, he ended up going to university to study business and economics. And Come then on. set Yes, and then set up a company of wealth management called Meridian Rock. And he's also an accomplished writer, done his own books, but he's also written columns for like the Seattle Weekly, ESPN, and a financial column for, check it out, Playboy called oh my God. Duff Duffonomics. <laughs> Duff, what? where have you been in my life? Where? I need this financial wizardry. In exactly, my life. exactly. Anyway, <laughs> dude, what's the next baseline? It is time to swap albums. We're moving to Use Your Illusion One. It's so 1991. Good. I'm standing on the street in line of budget tapes and CDs to get <laughs> the long box Use Your Illusion One and Two. I get it. I run home. I pop Use One into my CD player, and this is what I hear. Duff, dude, uh, starts the record. What a tone. sound, yeah. Oh, uh, I mean, it's it's, it's incredible. incredible, dude. What are the like the key attributes to getting the Duff McKagan sound? Okay, I think there's four things, really, like four distinct things at play here. He's playing a PJ, a jazz bass special made by Fender. He's always committed to this instrument. He's playing always with a pick. He's always playing back by the bridge, which is something yeah. that you noticed right away. He's not like, it's not this thing, right? It's this. No. It has that really like bright, spanky bridge sound. Right? And then he has chorus on. So if I play that riff, that's that Duff sound, right? PJ, yeah. pick, back by the bridge, and a bit of chorus. It's not just about being down here at the bridge, it's also about the angle that he uses. Oh, He's yeah, always yeah, yeah. playing a slight. Yeah. He's... The scrape. Exactly, he's getting that scrape because the angle of the pick is hitting the string and getting you that <laughs> so killer. And you can absolutely hear this like scrapey Duff McKagan's signature sound on this next tune. 
dude? Oh. Uh, Terminator 2. Terminator 2. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to his fill. Oh, look at that angle, too. The oh, you can really hear that scrape. Yes. Give it a shout in the comments if you remember this as good as I can. Oh. I mean, come on. And that fill he plays right into it. And I just thought it did that the whole time. I thought the whole tune, the whole intro was. But it isn't. It does that. Oh. Yeah. Sneaky Duff McKagan, man. Hey, and let me say it one more time. If you want the tab and notation for all of the bass lines that you've been listening to today, it's down there in the description. Hit that link and you can get it for free. And hey, let me just put it out there as well. We've been looking at the analytics for this channel and 60% of the people that watch every single week are not subscribed. If you are one of the people that are loving the content, we would love for you to consider subscribing. We have got a big, hairy goal. The team at SBL, we're trying to hit 1.5 million. Incredible, right? 1.5 million base players subscribed to this channel. It would make a freaking day if you hit that subscribe button and become one of our community. Now, with that said, let's hit the next baseline, Mr. Allison. The next one, we can't leave it out. Of course, we're going back to Appetite for Destruction, the intro that Duff plays on Sweet Child of Mine. I mean, within one note, you know what this is, right? Crazy. <laughs> Crazy. Check this thing out that Duff plays. You see? that when they wrote that they knew they were just like oh this is gonna be freaking gargantuan do you think great, that they knew great question i mean that guitar line it's so iconic but i don't know man i think you'd have to have some pretty incredible like delusion to think that is going to change the world maybe they did maybe yeah. some of them did but also it's kind of cool to think of them as just like really working hard on this record together and loving being in LA together. I don't know, in the eighties doing their thing. Um, I don't know. Do you think they thought it was, do you think they knew? <laughs> Dude, if I was sitting in that studio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'd have been like, Oh, I'm going to spend so much money. <laughs> <laughs> Just just peeling off, dude. Just peeling them off. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, oh. Yeah. It, it, what a hit. What a hit. Hey, show us the bass line, dude. Show us it. Okay, check it out. So we've got Duff playing this. would love to know where and when that was written in the history of it behind it. Duff, if you're yeah. ever up for an interview, we are here for you, baby. We're here for you. Remember at the beginning of the video, we said we were going to right a wrong, a great tragedy that happened in the bass community. You remember this, Scott? Tragedy. <laughs> <laughs> when Bass Player Magazine ruled the world, yeah. was the cultural nexus of the bass community, they used to, I kid you not, give letter grades to <laughs> albums and bass players. Do you remember this? Old school, yeah, dude, old school, yeah, yeah. And I believe in 91, when Use Your Illusion came out, they disparaged Duff. I feel like the album overall performance was like a C or a D. And then like Duff's bass performance was also like, I don't know, it was like a C plus, a C minus. It might have even been a D. And I remember as a kid reading that and thinking, <gasps> oh, because I loved it. And I remember thinking, <laughs> well, hold on. I am I wrong? Do uh, yeah. I Is just there not have been wrong with it? Can I know? <laughs> <Yeah>. oh. <laughs> and I am here today. We are here today to call bullshit on Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Yes. Duff, we're giving you an A. We're giving you an A, dude. 
A plus performance, love your bass playing, love your vibe, love your commitment to tone and all that you do in parts. So thank you. We're wiping out that grade and now you are an honorable member of the SBL Academy. <laughs> Listen, guys, just to end it, hey, if you want to win one of these bases, as we said earlier, it's completely free to enter the giveaway. Win a base, build a school or you can hit the link down there in the description and we'll see you in the next one.